Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're now tuned to the show. I'm your host, MJ, and we're going to take another trip down for our name. So, as you guys may know from the title, this is going to be a new series that I'm going to be creating. And what I decided to do is that, because I'm, I'm a huge fan of the classic horror films and, as well and the classic films, so I decided to make a series about classic horror films. Now, I know it can be hard to condense uh, just the entire um, the entire bundle and package of classic horror films into one video, so I decided to make a series. And what I'll do is, to not make the, each episode so long, what I'll do is I'll just talk about briefly, very briefly, about a couple of a couple of classic horror films in each episode. So that's how it will be. Uh, so with this episode, the first episode, the pilot episode, I'm going to be talking about a couple of uh, classic horror films that I think that I like and I think that were, were phenomenal jobs, okay? One of the first ones I want to talk about is, uh, and I have my notes just as you guys go, just in case I don't want to miss anything, so I have a little bit of notes. But the first film that I want to talk to you guys about is The Last Man on Earth. The Last Man on Earth is a, uh, was released in 1960, and it is starring Vincent Price, okay? Now, what this film was about is a clack, it's, it's black and white, okay? So I will let you guys know that as well. Some of the classic horror films I talk about, I will make sure I let you know whether it's black and white or it's color. Now, The Last Man on Earth, I think, was a good film, and especially starring the phenomenal, phenomenal Vincent Price, okay? We all know about Vincent Price. Vincent Price is a beast, okay? Vincent Price is what everyone in the modern ages and stuff, what, what we see of and view as Stephen King, this is what Vincent Price was, but just basically a hundred times more, okay? Vincent Price is, is we, everyone should know of Vincent Price, even if you didn't know of Vincent Price, I'm pretty sure you heard my word mouth, someone mentioned Vincent Price. But Vincent Price was very good at being the composer and the producer of all his uh, works, but also starring in his own films and everything. And you know, when we in a lot of Vince, Vincent Price's works, we've seen... Um, a lot of consistency from um, actors and actresses that we had seen in previous films um, working with Vincent Price. But anyways, The Last Man on Earth, released in 1960, it pretty much was about, what I liked about it, the story structure was phenomenal. And the casting was phenomenal too, of course, because the main, the, the main majority of the cast, the whole movie was just based on focus on one character, and that was Vincent Price. So pretty much the backstory of this film, of The Last Man on Earth, was, was about uh, after some type of plague or some type of... Um, some type of some type of vicious plague that basically everyone on the, everyone in the world basically starts keeps getting sick and they um, start dying, okay. And Vincent Price is pretty much the last one on basically on Earth, the last one that's still actually human. Everyone else has um, when they catch this plague, they get sick and then they wind up dying eventually. And some of them, a lot of them, turn into zombies. But Vincent Price is the only one that survived in the movie. Well, actually, that was still alive in the movie that was human. Now, what, what was intriguing about the film is um, is that the only reason why he was the only one that did not get sick and everyone else got sick, even when I thought it was sad because his uh, daughter and his wife eventually got sick too and they had to die too. And, and the military were taking them away and stuff and then throwing them down and burning them and stuff because they knew, obviously the military knew what was going to happen. They were going to turn into zombies, so they had to take them out right in and there. But the, what, what I liked about it is that the reason why Vincent Price was Vincent Price was the only one to survive, but actually was the only one still human and did not get sick, is because of when he went and traveled, and when he went on a, on a, a, a traveling a, adventure, he wound up taking a certain vaccination, which had prevented him, basically was, was prevented him from getting sick and catching this vicious plague that just surfaced all over, throughout every city and throughout every town. So that was very vicious. Throughout the whole movie, it's basically just about Vincent Price is going around, just, he's doing the job what the military were doing, basically just burning people. Well, he, it's not like he was burning people that were sick. He was burning he was burning people that were already dead and that were laying in the street. So he was basically kind of what you call the cleaner. He was cleaning up the little town and stuff. And I like how he just was like, he, he was just going throughout the movie, just the only one alive. Could you imagine that being the only one, the only one just alive? No one else to talk to. And you in your home, and he had to, his home was his safe place, but he went through the town just shopping, everything, pick out a new car, don't have to pay for it because there's no one, there's no one else on the earth. But it, it was a phenomenal film. It was a good film. And what was the twist was what happened was some of the people that were actually sick and infected that did not turn all the way zombie, they actually be 
started um, rally and started to t uh, uh, turn on Vincent Price and they wanted to track him down to kill him because they thought that he was a bad person or evil person, but they didn't realize and understand that he was still human. He wasn't infected. So that was a good overall with that. So as I said, I like that movie. It was a very good classic horror film, black and white. If you have not seen it, The Last Man on Earth, I, I recommend that you add it to your to-do list. Another film that I thought was a good film is Another one that was released in 1959, Attack of the Leeches. Attack of the Leeches was also another good film, once again, released, released in 1959. Now, what this film is was basically like in a small, in, in a small town, uh, citizens are, in a small town, citizens are starting to disappear, and then no one's under, no one, um, can't figure out what's going on and even you have the public officials and the city town officials they're running around trying to figure out why are the, all these people in this small town disappearing and what it comes to find out is um, as they, the, the rumors spread about some possible monsters but you know how when people talk about something that we consider a conspiracy uh, no, no one wants to believe it not even the public officials but what happens is that eventually they come to discover and find out that there's some type of creatures or monsters inside the lake and then just basically the whole the public officials and then the town, they're just basically running around about this kind of swamp where these big leeches that are living under the, underneath those underneath those swamp and got their own little thing in there where they're not actually killing the people. They were taking the people that they were disappearing and they were putting them under the underneath. They were taking them down underneath the uh, underneath the swamp and then bringing them up under, in the surface where they, they were housing them. I don't know for what, because they never showed what they were what these leeches were housing them for, but they were housing them for something. Okay, but that was the basic overall of this story. Um, uh, attack of um, uh, in a small town. Uh, uh, I mean, not in a small town. Sorry, attack of the uh, giant leeches. That was the whole story structure of this film about some leeches in a swamp that come out and start just to capture people and then taking them deep down under the swamp water and then just housing them for something, obviously. But they never really specifically showed us what they were housing them for. Uh, but I thought that was a good film. It came out in 1959. If you haven't seen that, I recommend that you go peep that out too. 1959 film, Attack of the Giant Leeches. Um, now, one more film before I wrap this up. One more film I want to tell you guys about. Now, this one is particular because it's actually considered the pioneer. It's co actually considered a pioneer film of this certain era and time of film. Now, this particular era in film where we where we had it was called silent films. Now, silent films eras was be from the ran from, I believe between the 1890s all the way through the late 1920s, and you know Charlie Chaplin, the actor Charlie Chaplin, is a basically a huge icon when we're talking about um, silent films. For those of you guys that don't know what silent films are, silent films are films where it's um, they're made. You, you're seeing the acting and you're seeing the actors and the actors and the actresses performing, but you don't have any actual audio dialogue. There's no dialogue, but you do have audio. You have basically what, we, what you had in silent films was the orchestra or music playing in the background while the actors are just acting out the scenes. That's what silent films are. As I said, silent films ever ran from between the 18, 1890s all the way through the late 1920s, and. One of the, one of the, if I not would say, one of the biggest films of the silent film era, and will be considered one of the pioneers of this era of the um, silent film eras, will be called is the film, the, the nineteen, um, the nineteen twenty seven film, the nineteen twenty seven film Metropolis. Okay, if you have not seen this film, I recommend you see it. Metropolis is a good film. Now, what Metrop Metropolis is a German film. Okay, it's a German film that was released in nineteen twenty seven and directed by. Um, Fritz Lang. Yes, I want to make sure I pronounce that right. Yes, Fritz Lang. Uh, some of these people's names, it's, it's hard for me to pronounce, so I have to like, kind of look at it again. But yes, Fritz Lang. Fritz Lang had uh, uh, directed this film. It was a hell of a job. I liked it. It was good. Even though it was a solid film, I think it still was on point. It was a good. Now, the backstory of this, of this of this film, Metropolis, it was basically about the son of a... a um, the son of the, the head of the town or the city, the master, the master of the city, the son was got caught in an entanglement and it became in between the middle of his father being who was the master of the city and all the city, regular city workers, the common workers, all the poor people. So it was it was it was basically a political movie. That's what this movie was. It was a, it, it's considered a sci-fi movie. That's also they, they this was labeled as a sci-fi movie, but actually I would say this actually is a sci-fi horror film. So we would say when we're talking about horror. 
the genre of horror, but the sub the sub genre would be sci fi. So it's a sci fi horror film, even though it does not get credit or it's not labeled. Even if you look on Wikipedia, it doesn't say oh sci fi horror. It just says sci fi, but this is actually a horror film. Uh, it's in black and white as well. But as I said, we're talking about um, it's a political war. We all know, even to the modern times, we see political wars and civil um, civil wars, and um, it's a battle between all the lower class and poor people that actually. Um, do all the work and the backbone work for the city, and then when you have the the head of the, the head of the city, the, um, um, which is uh, Frederick's uh, father, Mr. Ferguson, I believe, he um, he basically sets all the rules and stuff for the city. And what happened was, it was they they, they had Maria played by Bridget Helm. May I add that Bridget Helm did a hell of a job, phenomenal job in this film. But um, Bridget Helm playing Maria was basically she was in the middle. She was like considered like the spokesperson or the the the. The, the, the dictator for all the, the lower class, the poor people that actually work in these factories and stuff, um, work in slaving and stuff. She was, and she she kept the peace, but she actually was, uh, speak the, like I said, the spokesperson for them. But what happened was, there was a scientist, there was a math, there was a scientist, and you're talking about Mr. Mr. Fredder, um, um, actually the, the master of the city, the town, the master of the city or master of the town, he noticed that uh, Maria, played by Bridget Helm, he noticed that Maria was the person that basically all of the people, all the lower class, all the poor people, all the citizens that they, they, that they flocked to, that they listened to, to take advice from, and that they looked up to her as a leader. So he decided to tell this, have this mad scientist to, to basically kidnap Maria, played by Bridget Helm, kidnap Maria, and then hold her captive while, he, while the scientist makes a mimic of her, or should we say a clone of her through a robot, but clones her to, so that way she can to distract the people and the citizens to get them to go along to the get along gang. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys heard it, the go along, get along gang. But to get all the people to stop them from rallying or stop the, or, or distract the people from what they're actually really focused on their purpose and to get them to just go with whatever that um, the city master and the townspeople says, okay? So that's what it was. And what happened was that at first it was portrayed in the movie that uh, Mr. Fredder, the, 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 the master of the town or the city that he, of Metropolis, that he was the main antagonist. But when we, as we get further into the story, we come to find out that he was not actually the main antagonist. The main antagonist was the mad scientist because the mad scientist started just going blankly, bluntly and started trying to use this evil Maria for all bad purposes. Now, what, one thing that I liked about this film is that um, Bridget Helm, I think Bridget Helm did a phenomenal job, okay, especially when she had to switch from two different characters in a film, especially during this time and era, where she had to switch from the good Maria and then switch to this evil robotic Maria. It, it, she did a phenomenal job, like, able to just switch like that. I liked her performance. She did a hell of a job. Now, as you guys know, I told you guys about the silent film era. Silent film eras, you didn't have dialogue, so you had to actually read along with the film in order to see what was going on, uh, understand what was going on. Um, but it was still a pretty, very, very good film. I think, like I said, it is definitely a horror film, even though it's not get, the credit is not given as a horror film, but it is a horror film. And it was just a phenomenal job. And it was a pioneer film of the silent film ever, even though it was one of the late, last, late, one of the last films that came out as far as in the silent film era, it was still considered the, the pioneer of the silent film era. Um, it was just a phenomenal job, and what I think, what I think was so good about it is that the film related to the mass of people in reality. It relates to us in reality. We all know that there's always civil unrest, protests. Um, there's disputes between the rich and the elite, and the one percenters versus the people that are poor, just living day to day or just struggling. It's always that battle. So this is this is how this movie touched base on about that. And especially when we see about, and we talk about entertainers, as far as musicians, singers, rappers, you know how they say that a lot of them are used as far as Illuminati puppets to stray people wrong and to teach. This movie shows that perfect. This movie, that's what happened in Metropolis, the movie, the 1927 film Metropolis. They use this robotic uh, version of Maria to basically distract the people and to get them to go along, get along with whatever that the, uh, that the town or the city masters or the one percentile wanted them to do and keep them distracted on what they were actually focused on in, in, the, in the first place. And then we see that's what happens in reality. We have these, these, these particular celebrities that are used to distract and keep the people under heavy distraction instead of being focused on what's really going on under the table. Um, that's why I think this, this film was so good. 
but those were those are the three films in the first episode, the pilot episode of classic horror films that I that I, that I just wanted to talk about, and I think that if there are must watch films if you haven't seen them. I highly recommend you watch them once again. The Last Man on Earth, starring Vincent Price, uh, the attack of the the attack of the giant leeches, and Metropolis, the nineteen twenty seven film Metropolis, which is a silent film. Those three movies, I highly recommend that you watch them if you haven't watched them. Uh, they're so phenomenal. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. This is the first episode of this new series, Classic Horror Films. Expect more to be coming. Uh, as we know, we just keep going and we keep going. So I want to thank you guys once again for tuning in to the show. Much love and appreciation to all you guys for supporting me. So until next time, peace and blessings.